All in all, all present say aye. 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 Okay, could you each state your name so that she can get it in Absolutely. the minutes? Absolutely. Sister Paula Rose Yarnick. Ralph Taylor. Charles Davis. Bobby Snyder. And Mike Suford. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, accepting the, of the minutes of the September 13th, 2021 meeting. Do I have a motion to accept? I so move. Do I have a second? I second. So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Next item on the agenda is uh, the public hearing. I, do I need a motion to open that, Mary? Yeah. Do I have a motion to open up the public hearing? I move to open the hearing. Do I have a second? I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Mary? Okay. The first uh, item on the agenda that we'd like to address in this public meeting is um, unmet public needs um, to be addressed with CDBG funds. Is there anyone here that would like to address that topic? Okay. Um, this is different than the public service yes, individuals. Yes, this is different than the public service um, discussion. So if you would come up to the microphone, state your name. If you're with an agency, state which agency. If you're not, no big deal. And then um, just please state for the record what you see as unmet uh, needs that we might need to address. Okay? All right. So let's start. With the second row, Sister Vicki, you get to start. Uh, and then I saw a hand back there. Uh, anybody else? Okay, those two. Let's go forward if you wouldn't mind, please. My name is Sister Vicki Perkins. I don't know if this is on. Does it need to be on? Okay. Sister Vicki Perkins, and I work at the Leavenworth Attainable Housing. And I think one of the really huge unmet needs here in Leavenworth is to get housing that is affordable for people and attainable. And there's a difference in those two. A house might be affordable to somebody, but they can't get to it because they can't, don't have the deposit, the first month's rent, the, all of those kinds of things. So right now there is very little really attainable housing for people. If you're working at a uh, job that pays minimum wage, there's almost no way you can find decent housing in Leavenworth. So I feel very strongly that we need to take a look at how we can develop some of these things. A number of the places that were relatively, and that's a strong word, relatively, reasonable, were sold during COVID. And so People bought them, came in, renovated them, and when they did that, of course, they raised the rent. And so those that were somewhat affordable are not affordable now at all. And so there's very little for people who are living in poverty to, to get. And um, so I would really encourage us to look at how we can somehow, and we've got a group that's looking at that, but we're, you know, it's a slow process, but I would encourage the city to look at doing something to help get attainable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, next, please. State your name and, and what agency you're with, if you're with one. My name is Julie Jenniston. I'm with the Salvation Army of Leavenworth County. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we see is the need for transportation. Uh, people can, there's jobs out there, but our community can't get to them. Um, if they're spending a lot in, for taxis to get back and forth to places, it cuts into how much they have to pay for rent or their utilities. So it's a, it's a huge gap that we have here. Um, so, and I know that the, the topic of uh, Transportation has been thrown around quite a few times over the past few years, uh, but that still does exist to be a huge issue here. Thank you very much. Anyone else that would like to speak about unmet needs? Okay. Brian, good to see you. Sorry about that. Thanks for coming. Yes. Um, all right. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, 
I think we're ready to move on to um, public service agencies. We received um, four applications. Uh, so the first one, um, I'm just going to do them in order, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Order uh, that we received them. So the first agency to speak would be the Leavenworth Interfaith Community of Hope. All right, the one time you, you know, have to go first when you get your application in first. So I'll make sure to just get in second next time, right, Mary? <laughs> Hello, members of the board, Mary and team. Um, I am Miranda Agnew. I am the, I keep saying new because I, I fell in behind Sister Vicki. So I feel like when you fall in her footsteps, you get to claim that for a couple years. Um, so I'm the new Executive Director, um, this is going on my second year at the Leavenworth Interfaith Community of Hope. Um, we did submit a CDBG application. Uh, we do not have rent. Um, thankfully, our building is paid in full, but we do have quite the utilities um, since a lot of days we run 24-7. So um, we requested 13000 which would pay for um, the majority of our utilities um, throughout the year, especially our electric bill. Um, and that would be what it would be used for. So this is only, last year I was on Zoom, so I'm, I'm still going to claim the new card. I'm the newbie, so if there's something specific that I'm supposed to. Why don't you speak to what your agency does program. and um, the components within? Absolutely. So at the Community of Hope, we have three main programs. Um, we have our night shelter and our day center. Um, between those programs, we did serve um, 160 individ unique individuals in 2021. Um, we also have our third program, which is Welcome Central. Um, that is more of our resourcing center for the community. Um, so anything from birth certificates to IDs to food stamp applications, rental and utility assistance, um, a little bit of everything. Um, in Welcome Central, we also do transportation. So we do provide some free transportation in Leavenworth. Um, to not jobs and medical appointments and those types of things, grocery stores. Um, we're not the only anymore because we're very thankful to have grocery getters, but um, we are free, um, limited transportation. In Welcome Central, we served around 441 unique individuals, so we service a lot more individuals in that um, branch of our organization. Um, we also serve lunch every day free to our community, so every day but Saturday. And the reason we don't do Saturdays is because of the community meal. Um, but we do to-go meals, and on any given day, it's anywhere from 20 to 100 individuals um, that come to our um, building and get lunch for free during the day. Does the board have any questions about the application you received from her? No. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for being first. Yes, absolutely. Did a great job. Thank you. Okay, number two, the guidance center. Please state your name and uh, then give a brief, brief bit about your organization and your request. Hello, my name is Rachel Sweet and I am with the guidance center. We are the community mental health center for Leavenworth, Atchison, and Jefferson counties. I am requesting $21,939 for our Leavenworth facility, and that is a total of three months' worth of energy bills. We provide outpatient care to our clients, and that can include outpatient therapy, respite care, case management, psychosocial services, medication management, and we service everyone from about two years old to end of life. Have any questions? Questions from the board? I don't have any questions. Questions about... The application, the budget, anything? No, ma'am. So you say you service uh, all needs and whatever. What what needs are we talking about for us? Mentally? Or yes, mental, all mental health needs as well as medication management within mental health needs. So depression, anxiety, um, and then diagnoses all across the board. Okay. Autism as well. We do autism testing, which we're very proud of. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, next up is Catholic Charities of Northeast Kansas. Hi, I'm Jackie Mason, and I'm the manager here in the Leavenworth office, and thank you so much for having me today. 
Our request uh, for CDBG funds this year is $78,000. That should cover our rent. No, no. I mean, seven, excuse me, seven, 7800 well. Let me not be greedy here. Okay. I was like, hey, I need a All right, we're It's better. been one long day. Can we, write, okay. can we write you a check that you want? Yeah. All the typos I ever made. <laughs> that should cover our utilities for approximately between five and six months on the actual building. Catholic Charities. We um, assist with direct financial assistance on rent and utilities. The last year, our last fiscal year for just those two things alone, our direct financial assistance that we provided to the community of Leavenworth was over 277000 and I got that number right. Okay. In addition to that, we also do clothing for people in our community, household items, Thanksgiving. We help with food stamp applications. We've also, during the COVID, we have been helping people apply for their CARA funds the Kansas Emergency Rental Assistance Fund, so we've been assisting with those funds as well. We also have the food pantry. Uh, during COVID, Catholic Charities did remain open. We just recently got back to our client choice model on that, so we're getting people back through our food pantry where they can make their own food choices. Also during COVID, we also do the uh, commodity Supplemental Food Program, what we were finding is, which is for our senior citizens, that they weren't coming in to pick up their food. So working with a couple of groups here in town, we were able to offer home delivery during the, the COVID pandemic and are still doing that to meet that need. Uh, we were able to do VITA last year for, we did 217 total returns, federal and state brought in $280,000 in returns. We are doing our Kansas Loan Pool program still, which is payday title loan refinance program to help people. Uh, we are also still continuing to op operate our financial family, tr our family financial transformation program, teaching people better financial and budgeting skills. Last year, we had close to 40 volunteers every month. And basically, at this point, we're utilizing the resources that we can and the best we can and helping as many people as we can. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Questions, questions from the board? I have no questions. Questions about the budget or anything about the application? Feel free to up that amount if you want to. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. We'll give till it hurts. <laughs> okay. The last application that we received was from St. Vincent Clinic. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Oh, you're on that side. <laughs> Blind. Okay. Um, my name is Beth Sponowitz, and this is Beth Watkins. It's Beth and Beth, like that. We're from St. Vincent Clinic. We provide primary care services to patients in Leavenworth County. Um, right now, about in 2021, about we started accepting Medicaid and Medicare insurances, so about 98% of our patients are uninsured. Two-thirds live at or below 100% um, of federal poverty levels. We provide primary care services, chronic care management, uh, medication assistance. Um, we have partnerships through the University of St. Mary for their um, DPT program. So we offer physical therapy for our patients. And we have another partnership with Cleveland Chiropractic, where we provide um, chiropractic services to our patients as well. Um, we also work with, the, with St. John's to provide labs and radiology services for our patients. Um, that's that's pretty much it. We are requesting eleven thousand five hundred and sixty dollars to cover our uh, utilities. Again, any questions from the board about the application? Yes. The uh, eleven thousand five fifty, you say? 
Yes, sir. Is that enough money for all that you do? How <laughs> many requests? Well, it's for utilities. So um, we actually, our building is actually owned by SCL Health. And so um, I think we don't, there's no rent that we pay. Um, it's just predominantly um, let's see, water, electric, gas, and trash. Um, we've also, um, we're hoping to do some expansions and offer more services in the upcoming year. So potentially, um, when we, hopefully if we talk next year, we, our request could be different. But for now, this is based on the budget we have um, last year and this year, kind of looking forward into the 2022 fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. You noted an increase in uh, patients served. And I guess, is there a longer term trend that you guys are tracking? You're asking if there's more patients? Yes. Um, is there a long term trend that shows that ticking up in the community? Uh -huh. You know, um, this last year, a lot of people have lost insurance for various reasons, um, jobs, et cetera. Um, and so we do have, I would say probably 25% of our um, patients who come to us are um, unstably housed. Um, some, some of our friends, we share friends with the Community of Hope. Um, we also um, are tracking the number of new, um, all of our patients have to qualify for services every year. So we are showing an increase in the number of new patients that are asking for services. Um, and we call them new patients because we haven't seen them in a year. So maybe we saw them <laughs> three years ago and we haven't seen them in a bit and now they're back again. Are you encroaching upon capacity or anything like that? Just out of curiosity. We are actually, um, due to COVID, we've had some staffing issues. We just got all of our team restaffed at St. Vincent. Beth is a um, recent... Can I still call you a new hire? It's been a year. No. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> still, girl. She's still new, oh, and new. we love her. Like um, Miranda. <laughs> and um, we had a significant amount of turnover. We've actually increased the number of... Um, we always pride ourselves on running the skeleton crew of the clinics, right? Um, and it didn't... It was always a struggle. And with COVID, it did not work any longer. Um, we couldn't run that short-staffed any longer. There's just... There was zero redundancies. It wasn't working. So we have, what are all the new hires we have? We have a, an MA and a nurse, um, another nurse leaving on maternity leave. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Yeah, we hired a front desk person recently. An extra front desk person that's full-time, which we haven't had before. We have someone handling our lab and our pharmacy, which we haven't had. And we even have a, a grant to hire a patient care coordinator yep. to help qualify patients. So like, we've actually increased our staff, just our support staff. We just couldn't manage it anymore. Any more questions? Oh. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, in addition to the applications that we received, um, CASA would like to speak about bringing forth an application. Hello, I'm Kelly Meyer. I'm the executive director for um, First Judicial District CASA. And I have notes because I don't want to forget anything. Um, so I first want to make sure that I am expressing a genuine apology because our agency was not able to get an application in before the deadline. Um, we have not yet submitted an application. I did um, have correspondence with Mary a few weeks ago or a day before today. <laughs> and um, she did advise me to bring a copy for everyone. So if you choose, I have a copy and an original um, for everyone that's here of our um, completed application. Um, but to give a little bit of information before I share with you information about CASA, I will explain that um, just so the board is aware, the process that we have handled in the past, um, we being me, me and the executive director of a nonprofit, it's usually just me, um, is that on the first day of the month, I would always go through the prior year's commitments, obligations, due dates. And that has been successful to, for me up until this point. Um, when I pulled those, those in, that information on February 1st, I noticed that CDBG was on my list for February. I immediately reached out to Mary that day and received an email back from her and a copy of the email that she had sent on the 4th of January where I was included in that application. Um, 
I don't pretend to understand technology. I still am amazed that you flip a switch and the light comes on. So I don't know how things work, but what I do know is that I was on vacation that week. The, the following week when I returned, it was not in my inbox. Um, I've looked back through my tenure since 2007, and the application had always been due in February. So on my end, I didn't see a reason to check that in January. I promise you that will never happen again. Um, the apology for me is not just on behalf of CASA to the board, but also uh, the tremendous weight that I feel because we serve four to 500 kids a year that have been abused and neglected, and the weight of not being able to have the financial support that we have had from CDBG in past years to be able to sustain the services and the programs and the space that we have, um, it falls here, and I feel it incredibly. So I just would like to express that on myself, on behalf of myself, CASA, um, and, and beg for your, your, your grace to allow us to apply for the funds. Um, in past years, this has been a source of our, our revenue to pay for half of our rent um, for our Leavenworth office. Uh, over 80% of the clients that we serve are citizens of Le the city of Leavenworth, and we need that space in order to continue to try to maintain their health and safety. What we do at CASA very much so aligns with the mission of what CDBG funds try to do to maintain health and safety um, of, of citizens of the community. So I feel like it is a good fit. It's been a good fit in the past. Um, this, is, this is my error. This is something that went wrong, and I would hate for something that I did wrong to affect 500 abused and neglected kids in Leavenworth. Um, so with that, I can go more into details of services and what we do and, and more particulars about who we serve, but I'd like to stop and ask if you have any questions or if you'd like for me to provide you with a copy of our application. Um, Mr. Chairman, I suggest as a board we gather the information um, and then when we're discussing it, we'll open it up to the rest of the board if we wish to fund them. Absolutely. So if you'd like to hand us your application, it's not a promise. Do you get the original name? Do you want all of them? Yeah. Is your staff, uh, do you have some staff volunteer, volunteer with uh, the uh, families and stuff that kind of watch the families? Or? Yes. Yes. So I, I'll share a little bit of information about our programs and services. We operate three primary programs, the first being our namesake, which is our CASA program, um, CASA being Court Appointed Special Advocates. Within that program, our primary duty is to recruit, train, and then supervise volunteers that are lay everyday folks um, that then advocate for the, um, the children that we are assigned to through the Child Need of Care Court. So those are children that the court has determined for some reason to be a child in need of care, which means in the court side they have experienced some form of abuse or neglect. Okay. There should have been a total of eight. The top one was the original. Oh, Brian, I think you have my original. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you had it in the folder. Um, so, so all of the... <laughs> All of the children that are served from that program, the national model that we use is that all of those children are served by volunteers. We only use volunteers to advocate for those children um, in abuse and neglect cases. And they follow those cases for the life of the case. So from the time that we're assigned until the time that child achieves permanency. Usually that's with their, their bio parents um, or their adoptive parents or it's a permanent custodian. So it's someone else the court has deemed to be an appropriate placement for this child until they are 18 or you know, whenever kids leave, you know, it's not always 18 anymore. <laughs> um, and so that is the prime, that's how our program got started um, about 27 years ago in Leavenworth. And we built on that foundation. The next program that we added after the CASA program was our Child Exchange and Visitation Center. I'm sure if you guys are here in the evening on a Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday night, you may notice there's a little bit more traffic on this intersection because we're literally catty corner. <laughs> and so we do supervised visitation and monitored exchanges at our center. And for that program, we also train volunteers to be observers of that parent-child contact. So that's non-custodial parents and their children. Um, we 
usually about 97% of our cases are by order of the court, provide an a environment where we have security on staff. Um, it's a place where parents, co residential and non-residential parents, do not have contact with one another. So we eliminate that potential domestic disturbance that we see a lot of times in the, the cases that we receive. Um, and then we provide supervision so that those children have direct contact with the parent that for some reason they're not allowed to have contact with outside of our office. That could be because the other parent could be homeless and not have a place um, for them to safely visit with them. Usually it's because there's some allegation or proof of abuse that has occurred between that parent and child. It could be physical abuse, mental abuse. It could be that the parent has a substance or an alcohol substance abuse problem, or maybe they have a mental health problem that's prohibiting them from being able to have contact with their child that's unsupervised. Um, and then lastly, the program that we <laughs> inherited um, in 2017 um, is our Child Advocacy Center. We don't utilize as many volunteers in that program. That uh, We have a smaller staff, but we do provide forensic interviews for children who, about 96% of our clients are children who have been sexually abused. Um, we only see kids who have been sexually abused, severe physical abuse, or witness to pretty heinous crimes. Usually it's like a murder. Um, and so we provide the forensic interview services for those children, and then that information is used in collaboration with the multidisciplinary team, which consists of the Department of Children and Families representatives, Department, I'm sorry, um, law enforcement from various different agencies in this area, um, prosecution, usually the Leavenworth County Attorney's Office, and we collaborate with them so that we can ensure that we are providing a very high level of proficiency of interview for this child, hopefully so they only have to tell their story one time and they don't have to be interviewed over and over and tell the same story and re-victimize and re-traumatize themselves by telling those things over and over again. It's recorded and at the same time the child is being interviewed, it's being viewed live in an adjacent room um, by the law enforcement officer and the referring agency. Our recording is then sent on and can be used by prosecution and law enforcement as they're continuing to investigate and prosecute that case. So those are the primary programs that we operate. We also have um, family, I'm sorry, um, parent education, and we do three different types of parenting classes. Uh, the only parenting class we have that has a fee associated with it is our, our class that we offer to divorcing parents, and it helps to provide them with some basic information they need on what their children are going to experience as they divorce. So we call ourselves, we're the one-stop shop for kids stuff. If there's a kid that's being abused, if there's kids that need services, we have a basement that's full of clothes. If kids need an outfit or if they're out of clothes, we've had parents come shop for Christmas and birthdays in our basement. Um, and then trying to make sure we're providing education to as many parents as we can so that we keep kids safe. Any okay. questions from the board? I know you haven't had time to read the application, but do you have any questions <clears throat> in addition? No? no? And I would just also say, if you do have other questions for me, I don't know if you're able to ask me outside of a meeting, um, but even aside from that, I would encourage any of you, if you'd like to come view our offices, tour our, our office, um, just in general, uh, we like to show off what we what we have and, and make sure people in the community are aware. If you know anybody who wants to be a CASA volunteer, send them my way. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, that's all of that, uh, I think. Do we have anybody else that wants to speak? I don't believe so. Okay. Um, the next thing on the agenda is a board vacancy. I wanted to let you Just guys know. Don't we yeah. need to close the hearing first? If we open yeah. it, oh, we that's right. close it. I'm so sorry. I moved to close the hearing. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I only missed it once. <laughs> Second vote. All in favor of closing the meeting, say, or the public hearing, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, I wanted to let you know that we have a vacancy on our board. Um, Ellen Bogdan has moved. Thanks, so, everybody, for coming. I apologize. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so uh, I, I'm looking for a board member. Well, actually, I won't be looking for a board member. Somebody will be looking for a board member to fill this board out. So if you have any suggestions, you know, let me know. Otherwise, we'll we'll work on filling that. And they still have to be a Leavenworth resident, right? That's the requirement. Yes. Yeah. They have to be a Le Leavenworth resident. Oh. They do. Yep. Other than that, it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, 
that's the primary. Um, I don't have any other matters or correspondence that we need to address. So uh, the next thing that we need to do uh, is to discuss public service agency funding. So uh, that that's something the board's going to have to take up. We have. So our total we have to spend for this year is the with the forty five. Is 45 one no 52 for 71 okay, and that's yeah. just going up that. it's oh, up in okay. the corner yeah okay Got okay it. see it up in the corner um, and that's just going off last year uh, you okay, know we since we don't have our funding we haven't gotten our funding yet so I'm just going off of last year um, I think uh, the first discussion probably should be whether or not you want to accept the CASA application for funding does it have to be a vote of any kind? Um, I think probably a discussion first and then perhaps oh, a vote. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Has there ever been a case like this before where somebody missed a deadline? And... I know. That's me. Yeah, that's exactly. That's what I was thinking okay. about. But you, yeah. 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 There, there ha it, during my seven-year tenure, there has been one other case where somebody missed the deadline and we did not accept that application. Okay. But that was then, this is now. So <clears throat> you guys need to decide if you want to accept it or and not. And we are an advisory board advising you are the city council. You are an advisory board advising the city council. That is correct. That is your job. And <clears throat> they can accept your recommendations or not accept your recommendations as they see fit. So that is the other caveat is that we will design the annual action plan but they could change numbers if they so chose so um so i i would like to see them funded although i would also think they need to have a slight penalty for absent-mindedness It's difficult because it sets a precedent if we accept them. And yet, they're certainly worthy. She makes a great point. Um, setting a precedent is not something I'm worried about. I, I like the point. It's a great point. I'm not worried about setting a precedent because going forward, uh, you know, the whole, I really, really mean this. You're not going to get this in afterwards. But in my mind, there's no way we don't find a way to fund this. Maybe uh, uh, penalize them uh, with a certain percentage that we wouldn't normally penalize. You know, when when you go and redo the numbers, you know, I know that the the numbers for everybody else is going to change. Is, is that a fair assessment? Well, yeah, because we can we can't go over fifteen percent. Yep. The federal government yep. says no, we can't yeah, go 52, over fifty-two thousand. Fifteen percent of our um, total award, which so, is how I came up with the fifty-two thousand four hundred and so when seventy-one dollars. If we accept their application <laughs> and and the re numbers are rerun, these other agencies aren't going to get the the number that we have projected here to propose. That is correct. Okay. That is and, correct. And I understand that, uh, and, I, and I'd like to believe that they would understand that. I, you know, obviously, we're not leaving it up to these other agencies to, to have, make that decision for us. But, I, you know, I'm, what, an, what a passion to plea for, uh, for forgiveness. And, and in my mind, I don't see we, why we wouldn't or we, why we don't find a way to fund that in some form or fashion. It, maybe ever so slightly less based on the fact that there was some, you know, the, the lateness. But in my mind, we, we do. That's just, that's my opinion. I agree with you. I understand, of course, the lateness. You know, we don't set pressure on me. But I, I'm like this, you know, everyone deserves a second chance. <laughs> and it's been a while, you know, since I guess they didn't get in on time or whatever. And it seems like to me that... She's doing everything. Uh -huh. She's, uh, you know, she, be, she she just got overwhelmed. You know, she yeah, she was off for the January when she came back and oh well, I got to get this in. 
However, she could have just said, hey, I'm not going to do it at all because I know I'm late. So I'll just suffer the consequences. But due to everything that that, that this ACASA provides, I think we need it. I really do. I mean, yeah, because you got, I mean, they dealing with different sets of minds and mental all, you know. And so, but I just believe that, yeah, let's, yeah, let's go here and okay, give them, chalk them, give them a bad point, but still fund them. Okay. I I'll certainly leave that up to you as to how much or how right. you go in, in no. that sliding scale. <laughs> that <laughs> oh, not not? my job. No, no. <laughs> Dang it. No, I, you know, I, was, I looked at that too, and I think the, you know, the, what society's been dealing with the last couple of years, you know, every single one of us has a black mark oh, yeah, against yeah, us yeah. for doing yeah, something sure. or not doing something we should have done at the time we should have done it just because of communication and where people are and what we're doing. So I think to give us all the benefit of the doubt for some failures that we've had, um, and I don't, I think that their work is, um, I've known volunteers that have worked for CASA, and honest to God, they give their life blood. And I know a gentleman who even died, his last breath was, be sure someone goes to CASA for me, um, just because they advocate for those children who have no one else to speak for them. And um, I think to try to, it's a service that this community that will not have. I mean, if, if they go away, um, a lot of our kids are going to end up in the homeless shelter. Um, it puts the burden on those other agencies. But. It does. And so I think to, to do our best to give them, to accept the, uh, uh, the apology, not the apology, but and again, you, she didn't have to go give it to us knowing that it's late and, and maybe we're at the, at the end of our rope, but I think um, they're as desperate as anyone else. So I would guess, I would give it to them and with whatever we think is appropriate um, to, and you know, it seems like they're um, asking for a lot. Um, I mean, they're just not anything different than what they've asked for in the past, so they're not really overburdened. You don't want to make children the victim. Of That's a great No, I don't. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I, 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 I don't want to be re not responsible, but um, you know, it's a heavy burden to carry um, for children who are not taken care of. So, um, my question is: uh, It sounds to me like the board is in agreement. Is there a consensus on the board that you would like to fund them? Yes. 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 Okay. No, I came in five minutes late, so I don't know if that is a penalty that I should. No, <laughs> you can still vote. Oh, board members cannot leave. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, no, well, sir. Record, I was in the building. I just didn't know where okay, I was going. So I'll be here five minutes after. Just <laughs> <laughs> so I worked on numbers before. We came because I honestly didn't know if you would accept it or not accept it. And I could see you going either way. And it does set a precedent. So that's something that you're going to have to deal with in the future. Um, but that that is in the future. So um, I have a proposal. And I guess I'll just throw it out there. And then you guys can tell me if, if you think it would be worthwhile or not. Um, I am looking at the possibility, uh, St. Vincent's Clinic actually asked for less than they got last year. Um, they uh, Last year they got $11,624. This year they asked for $11,560. I'm wondering if we fully fund them because they ask for less. Mm -hmm. They, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but they said it was basically for utilities. Are they just taking their actual utility bills and then saying... That's what we generally ask them. We usually fund either rent for a nonprofit agency, some portion of their rent, or some portion of their utility bills. Okay. Um, and so uh, for St. Vincent Clinic, they own their building, so they're asking for utility assistance. Um, I was thinking that we would fund them um, fully at $11,560. We would fund a Catholic Charities at um, $7,800. And then the three other agencies give them all $11,000 each. Now, 
that's not even Stephen. That's not um, percentage of ask or anything like that. But uh, that makes it kind of equitable among the larger agencies, except for Catholic Charities didn't ask for, you know, a, a lot of money. So if we fund them at, a, at the $7,000 level and that, that was their full ask, I think we don't need to go above that. Um, so why don't you discuss that? And if you don't like that idea, I've got a couple of others. <laughs> I don't know. This just pulls up my heartstrings. It's hard to. Oh, so, it. so with the guidance center, you had <laughs> were they the, last? the initial uh, uh, proposed was a full ten grand more than what you're proposing with the split of. Correct. Correct, but it's more than they got last year. Yeah, yeah they, that's what I'm thinking, yeah, they, too. Yeah, definitely. Um, the guidance center is huge. I know. <laughs> and it has a lot of expenses, and I understand that. And I appreciate that um, with the new priorities that we have established, which is housing, mental health, yeah. and health, and um, substance abuse, that they cover kind of two of those categories. Mm -hmm. Um so, I don't know how you feel about that, but that I was just trying to think of a way. Um, CASA would not get their full amount that they asked for. The Guidance Center wouldn't get the full amount they asked for. And the Interfaith Community of Hope would not get the full amount they asked for, but they're, but they're, they're getting more than they, getting more than they asked for. Some yeah. are getting more yeah. than they asked for last year. Mm -hmm. So... Um, I thought that was a possibility. I like it. I, I, I can I, accept that. I mean, that's I, one solution that works. That, I absolutely. Do you uh, have any other thoughts about how you would like to split that money, or what you what you think? What did we do last year? I, I know we last used, year the um, the amounts are over last year's oh, fundings. Okay. Under twenty twenty one twenty two. And um, and then you would add on CASA at fifteen thousand six hundred dollars. And, and I, I remember talking about this last year. We had said, okay, well, what did we do previously? And it was like an increase over the previously did. Okay. Right, right. And this would not be that same formula. Gotcha. And it doesn't this, have to be. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, this would kind of more level some of those upper tier agencies, but that's just a proposal. If you want to go with a percentage, I can calculate it. The okay. only thing with doing a percentage, if I did a straight percentage of ask, the only thing that that would do is it, it would kind of penalize uh, St. Vincent's Clinic and um, Catholic Charities would not get quite as much. For not asking for more. For not asking for more. No, yeah. I don't think yeah. we do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. that. No, I don't either. Don't so. But they all have compelling. Oh, my. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, I mean, I don't want to say argument. It's not an argument. It's just compelling. Well, and, and in the past, we've had some other agencies that have been asking for money. We didn't hear anything from the um, Alliance. Or the Alliance didn't submit, and um, the Leavenworth Leaven Mission, Mission is in transition, so they didn't submit. Who else did we? Oh, we had those schools that were um, the churches, the Lutheran church or whatever, the daycare schools or whatever. Yeah, that we've had um, those. In that the, was the, yeah. So, so I think we're hitting the, the nail on the head for all of the major players in our city that are providing most of the work for our homeless and our indigent people. Yeah, I think um, the, Salvation Army didn't apply either. Mm -hmm. um, they <coughs> applied one. sometimes and not applied sometimes. I feel like it's up to them to apply because I send it out to the people who applied the previous year. I put it in the newspaper. I put it in an announcement to the Leavenworth County Human Services Council um, as an e-blast to their organization. So we try, we put it on the city website and we put it on the city's Facebook. So we, we do a pretty good job of trying to hit people. Mm -hmm. um, not saying 
that that obviously that's not foolproof because it didn't work this time. But that's what we we have done in the past, and that's what I did this time. And well, as long I, as we're meeting the HUD's requirements. I and I sent it to her. Yeah. I, you know, but I also can understand that sometimes things happen. Um, Wait, I have a question, not about this so much, but um, when the, the several people that said, you know, what their big community needs are, we know those already. The yes. housing and transportation is not yes. a secret to anybody who lives here. Um, do we get to do anything about that? Does that go back to the city planners? or? Well, I think that what, what, they, what they're expressing um, those issues does is we will get that into our five-year plan as expressed needs. If in the future, a Leavenworth Attainable Housing decides to build something or renovate something, you could change your allocations of funds. Um, not that there wouldn't be paperwork involved. There, with the federal government, there's always paper, <laughs> paperwork involved. But, but there is possibilities of doing that. There's no sense setting aside money for affordable housing if nobody's providing it right now. You know, we don't have any um, housing organization in town. But Leavenworth Attainable Housing is trying to start up. They're a 501c3. And so in, in the next five years, there's a possibility that they would move forward. Transportation irritates the fire out of me because... I thought you were going to use a different F word. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. No. Uh, because we applied to KDOT. We did a long study. We did all the paperwork with the guidance center volunteering, agreeing to run the transportation. Um, and we can't get it started because of the darn ship shortage. And so we can't get the vehicles. The vehicles all have to be bed by KDOT, all in a lump. And I'm sure it's because they're trying to get 500 of them or whatever for the whole state. Sure. That we can't get our allotment. So now they're saying that it'll be the summer. But we've had that money on the books for almost a year now. Wow. Just sitting there waiting for us to be able to start it. So I think that one... I feel comfort in that one starting. We have funds set aside for the city of Leavenworth. Um, for a starter program, it's not going to answer everybody's need, that's for sure, but at least it's going to start. Mm -hmm. So I think that one will probably be addressed, and it's much harder to use any CDBG money for transportation. That's, that's a very um, challenging twist. Mm -hmm. It would have to come out of the public service dollars, and that means that agencies just wouldn't be funded um, at all. So, um, <clears throat> so that's why we ask for unmet need. It's important to get that voiced into the record and to be able to address it moving forward, maybe within five years, maybe even further along than that. But that's that's why they ask every year what the um, and, unmet needs are and I'm really grateful to people who want to address it so does anybody have any other suggestions about funding do you want me to look at any other options for funding or are you happy with that as an option I'm okay with it I'm okay with I'm it. happy with it okay all right I'm going to build that in once we get to know what our total allotment is that may go up or may go down depending on what 15% of whatever we get is. So, um, How soon will you let that young lady or that, that your replacement? You, no. Oh. How soon will you let them know that we've, oh. we've agreed to fund them? Yeah. Probably let her know tomorrow. Okay. I, there's no reason to let her hang out there. No, I don't think. I, I wanted, yeah. I, I okay. Wanted to make that suggestion if it wasn't going to be any sooner to. Oh. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to do is <laughs> announce to you my replacement. Today we have um, Julie McKeel right over here. She works in our department and she is going to move into my position. Um, and 
we're lucky enough to have a week's overlap so that we can talk and share and do. And she will be the new face for CDBG. Julie, you want to say hello and tell them I anything? Was, I, I think I have had the privilege of actually having a small conversation with all of you for a short moment. Um, thank you for having me today, and I look forward to working with you in the future, trying to be the sponge with Mary with this short time period that we have left, and she has tough shoes to fill, so... Did Good luck with the five-year plan. It's the big one. <laughs> I am so ever grateful that Mary has been able to complete that. I have before written. she left for us to have a baseline, just in case somebody wants to change something. But I am very grateful for that. Well, I welcome. Have been a very big challenge to take on right away. Did she mention snacks? She's always providing snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I already think Brian owes us donuts or something. Uh, I know. Oh, I'm kids. sorry. So, <laughs> That's once. Don't let it happen again. I know. I, yeah. was, I walked around upstairs. Well, <laughs> I think I can speak for everybody. I know Sister Rose said it already. We're welcome. Yeah. Looking forward to working with you. Don't hesitate to reach out at any time. Now, I have a question. I if, absolutely probably will. If you had somebody in mind for a board member, do we have a... A description of what we do or just from we do okay we do so um, why don't you just email me that you have somebody that you're oh, you okay think might be interested it actually is an application that has to go through the city clerk's office they have to I don't know if you remember this but you have to be approved by the mayor which you know usually yeah. they whatever, haven't too many people usually down. whatever we suggest <laughs> usually they let me show up <laughs> <laughs> me too so well, I, I'm um, just thinking. I don't think they live in Leavenworth. I know a couple good people, really good people, but they don't live in. I don't think they live in Leavenworth. So okay. that's that's um, the issue. Today Lansing. is my birthday, so I'm going to cut out. <laughs> Your birthday. Happy yeah. Birthday. Thank Happy you. birthday. I, but before I do that, know. I, I want to say truly, it has been my pleasure to work with you. You are committed to helping people. It's watching you struggle about the money is just a reaffirmation of the fact that you're committed to trying to help people in Leavenworth, and I appreciate that. So thank you very much. I think that that's all I have. Okay. Just thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Thank you. I'm not Sorry, crazy. Ralph. Another seven years to break in a new one. We don't need to close out the meeting. We've already No, started. we've already done that. So I well, guess that's it.